Did a genetic test alert you to an increased risk for cancer? Or has a strong family history of cancer made you suspect there may be a genetic cause? In this video, we discuss Lynch syndrome, a genetic cause of cancer. To better understand Lynch syndrome, let's discuss some genetics. All of your cells contain DNA, the instructions to make you, and when they divide, that DNA has to be copied. Unfortunately, typos occur, and in the trillions of cells that comprise you, certainly there's one that's having mutations right now. Thankfully, though, we have proofreading mechanisms to catch these errors and correct them before they become an ongoing problem. But what if that proofreading equipment was broken? Well, then DNA errors would accumulate much more rapidly, and when you're born with a broken copy of that proofreading equipment, this is Lynch syndrome. The cancer that characterizes Lynch syndrome is colorectal cancer. Women also have a strong predisposition to develop endometrial cancer, ovarian cancer, and they're at increased risk for breast cancer. Men probably also have an increased risk for developing prostate cancer. Additionally, a person can have other cancers of the GI tract. That includes the stomach, the small bowel, and also the pancreatic or biliary system. There's also concern that a person can have a cancer of the urinary system. And this extends from the renal pelvis through the ureters and down to the bladder. Finally, distinct cancers of the skin and the brain can also occur in people that have Lynch syndrome. A confusing aspect of genetic diseases is that two people can have the same condition and yet have vastly different clinical courses. It would seem that if two people had the exact same gene, then we should be able to predict their clinical course with great precision, yet that's not the case. Two people with Lynch syndrome can have vastly different risks for developing colorectal cancer, with estimates varying from 10% to 90%. Why is that? Lynch syndrome is an autosomal dominant condition. That means that if one parent has Lynch syndrome, there is a 50% chance that their child will inherit the condition. Now they can hobble along with a good copy of the proofreading equipment that they got from their other parent and their DNA will not mutate. But over time, that second proofreader equipment will also fail. And when it does, DNA errors will rapidly accumulate within that cell, giving rise to a great risk for cancer. External factors such as smoking, the diet we eat, the type of work we do and where we live all influence the rate at which DNA errors accumulate. And so that can have a huge influence on how soon someone's second copy of proofreading equipment fails and once it does, how rapidly errors start to accumulate. This proofreading machine is called the mismatch repair system. And the genes that cause Lynch syndrome are those that instruct your body on how to make this machinery. The genes that are of concern are MLH1, MSH2, MSH6, PMS2. And when these genes are not working, then you can't make the proofreading equipment. Additionally, there's a gene called EPCAM, and if it's faulty, then it won't result in the correct production of MSH2. MLH1 and MSH2 are especially critical components of this machinery because they are key for identifying specific types of DNA errors. PMS2 is less critical because there's some redundancy that's built into this equipment so that its function is not quite as essential. As a result, people that have gene defects and especially critical components have much higher risk for developing cancers, whereas those with the less critical PMS2 variant, they have a lower risk of developing these cancers. Lynch syndrome accounts for nearly 3% of colorectal and endometrial cancers. And if people who have these cancers develop before the age of 50, nearly one in 12 of them have Lynch syndrome. It's estimated that about one in 300 people carry a Lynch gene, which means that even a small city should have a couple hundred people who have this syndrome. Now that's still fairly rare. So who should actually be tested for Lynch syndrome? Well, to start with, anyone who develops a colorectal or endometrial cancer should have that tumor tested for the fingerprint that suggests this person has Lynch syndrome. Not all errors of mismatch repair system were inherited. So if a person has a Lynch looking cancer, it might be that it's just a cancer that's the problem. And if we look at that person's original genetics, they're fine. That person does not need to go forward to tell their family members to get genetic testing. They don't have an inherited cause, Lynch syndrome. The distinguishing factor of Lynch syndrome is that you were born with one of those genes already being faulty. Additional testing for inheritance is also warranted if a person develops a characteristic cancer under the age of 50. People who have Lynch syndrome typically develop more than one cancer. That can either mean that at the time that they're diagnosed with colorectal cancer, there's multiple sites within their colon in which a tumor has arised, or they may have a colon cancer and then later have a brain cancer. And this suggests that they have Lynch syndrome. Finally, if you have a characteristic cancer 
within a pattern of family who has those characteristic cancers, this does beg the question whether you have Lynch syndrome. So what is a concerning family history? We use the three, two, one rule. This is three family members who are closely related. So if you, your father, and your second cousin twice removed all had a characteristic cancer, that doesn't count. Next, there should be two consecutive generations. So if your grandmother and then yourself had characteristic cancers, but your parents did not, then this is not in the pattern of an autosomal dominant inheritance. Finally, one of these members should have had the development of the cancer before the age of 50. As genetic testing becomes more affordable, I imagine a future where people will have universal access to genetic testing if they so choose. Many people would wish to forego this information, leaving it a mystery. Others may have a strong family history and want to put the issue to rest. Whatever they choose to do, we could use that information in order to better tailor screening programs. For example, if you didn't have any increased genetic risk, then we might not have to categorize you the same as your father who had colon cancer. That might mean that we can do less frequent colonoscopies, or we could discover that you really do need to have it. And I think you'd feel better having to go through the rigors of repeated colonoscopies, knowing that you were really doing something to prevent the disease. I hope you found the information in this video helpful to better understand genetic test results you may have received or if you're considering pursuing genetic testing. Please subscribe to the channel to be alerted to future content about genetic syndromes of cancer and how I as a GI doctor manage them. Thank you and be safe.